after 76 days, close to 2,200 miles, uh, a lot of weather, a lot of being uncomfortable, we've officially made it to the Gulf of Mexico. But before we get into all that, this is me, James, a substitute teacher from Canada. And this weirdo here is my buddy Pep. He's a bartender. Notice how I didn't say expert canoeists or outdoorsmen. Well, because this isn't a story about experts or travel influencers or vloggers. Nah, this is a story of how two morons managed to paddle over 2,000 miles from northern Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico and Louisiana. Hope you guys enjoy. After a very long-winded few days, we landed ourselves at Lake Itasca State Park last night. Uh, we've got all our stuff kind of strewn out right now. This is the day of putting in. Uh, we've got about a three-mile paddle before we reach the headwaters. We're going to pull out and kind of do an official start. Uh, it's going to be a great day. Here we are on Lake Itasca. We are putting the final items into the canoe. This will be the first time that our canoe, the Penobscot 17, will touch the water on this trip. So it'll be interesting to see how, how she floats. Because it's got a huge kink in her. Oh yeah, it's not straight. We're about to start our trip. So we've got uh, 10 liters of water plus another 10 liters of water. This is day one, by the way. I never use these bags ever. And she's got a hole in it. So it looks like we're starting with 10 liters of water instead of 20. <laughs> okay, here we are at the headwaters. Uh, so just up here, uh, there's a webcam where we kind of said goodbye to our friends and family. It's a small river, very start. Gear's all loaded up, we're gonna take off from here. It's crazy to think that this turns into the mighty Mississippi. Here we go. What are we doing, James? We're just walking down the Mississippi River right now. <laughs> Hoping it gets deeper soon. Watch your head, eh? Yeah. technique. It's an old town, man. We the hell out of these things. The knob squat. James doing the hard work here. The headwaters. Real mucky. If we go straight through in here, I think it kind of goes right. Yeah, I think it opens up over there too. I think this spot here is just gonna be like pretty thick. 
we'll just like snake our way through and then just try and get in that way. All right, we can see the river, but we got a lot of reeds in the way and a 17 foot canoe to turn around. So we're trying to figure out the best course of action here. These things kind of move. We can kind of like push them out of the way, but we're not really sure what the best move is. But we can see the river though, which is good news. Alrighty, so we've uh, made some progress. These giant reeds, if they're in deep enough water, they float. So if we move them, then we can inch ourselves forwards by just kind of moving our bodies forward like this. And we move forward literally inch by inch. We don't have very much further to go. Oh, the river's just right there. It's been about an hour process, but we're getting there. This is going to be our campsite for De Numero Uno. Pretty nice spot. Hey folks. Um, today is day two, it's October 10th, 2022. Uh, we got a beautiful morning here. Uh, we've got an 11 mile day today, which doesn't sound like much, but our, uh, our average was about one mile an hour yesterday. Uh, we encountered some really bad vegetation, which wasn't marked on our map. Um, we do have some class one rapids to do today. We have Velkins Dam. Uh, we stayed in Winogan last night and we're hoping to get to Coffee Pot Landing. Um, just worried about that vegetation. Some of it was impassable yesterday, uh, so we'll really be plugging along. Um, we'll update you if anything happens. Damn beavers. Oh God. All right, we got a bad case of beaver fever here. All right, we're in a pretty cool part of the river. It's like uh, snaking all around like this giant field. It's like a, a giant maze. We don't know where we started. Finally not walking the canoe. We're not sure where we're going, but like Pep said, we're not walking the canoe. So this is a bonus. Alrighty folks, plot twist. We made it to Brownie, right on. Uh, massive day today, 12 miles, which doesn't sound like much, but you know, we're dealing with basically no water up here in the headwaters. A um, Couple of big unknowns that we solved today. Um, we went through uh, our first set of rapids. Uh, I guess we were prepared for them to be more like rapids we know from back home. 
water is so low that you pretty much have to walk the entire time. Um, so we had about three and a half miles of walking that really slowed us down. We're going less than a mile an hour. Um, and just got drenched. So that was, that was a nightmare. Um, another thing we were really worried about was uh, the abundant vegetation that'll be coming up in the next uh, tomorrow, really. Now we got about three and a half miles of abundant vegetation we've got to get through. If it was anything like the unmarked vegetation we had to deal with day one, we were like in a nightmare situation. Like it would probably take us, I would say over a day just to get through it. We wouldn't know where to camp. Um, we went through about half a mile of that today and it doesn't seem like anything we encountered so it's we're, we're in a good we're in a good spot for tomorrow um we are unfortunately down uh full 10 liters of water we originally planned to have 20 uh 20 liters but on first our first day we lost a full dromedary bag um so a full bag of water that was 10 liters of clean drinking water and so we do not have clean drinking water until um, officially until pretty well Bemidji. Um, that being said, we do have tablets and things like that, so we'll boil it in case of emergency. Um, other than that, we're stoked that we made it to Brownie. We've got a couple big days ahead. Hopefully that there's no no big no big stuff coming up uh, that slows us down tomorrow and we're, we're ready to go. We do have about a mile of rapids tomorrow, so we're assuming we have to walk for that. But other than that, we're, we're right back on track. Hopefully it doesn't take us a week and a half to get to Bemidji. So right on. We'll see you tomorrow. So the rapids we were worried about were nothing. A little bit of rapids, but better than dragon. And also, there's no abundant vegetation at all. Things are looking up. It is very cold though. All right, it's day three. Um, we woke up this morning to rain and cold and we snoozed our alarm as any normal person would do, even out here. Um, the goal of the day today is to try and get to Pine Point. Um, and, uh, to dry my friggin' hands <laughs> and to warm them up too. Alrighty, it's lunchtime. We uh, we're here at Fox Trap Campground. Woodsy's whipping us up some PB wraps. I might put sausages in mine. We've been motoring today. We found out we can do about four miles an hour if we try really hard, which is awesome news because we thought it was gonna take us eight days to get to Bemidji. We'll keep you posted. All right, so we're doing a recap of uh, day three. Um, I feel like I'm in freaking Survivor right now because I got a buff on. Um, we started the day in a pretty uh, pretty tough spot. It was like 6 a.m. and it was pouring rain. It was freezing out. We snoozed the alarm. Um, we finally got out of bed. And then the rain kept, kept going, kept raining on us all morning. Um, we were pretty wet, pretty cold. Um, we thought we were going to do like, I think, 16 miles, was it? Yeah, something like that. Something like 16 miles today. Because um, on the map, it says abundant vegetation may be impassable. Um, but when we got to that point in the river, it was fine. And we were actually able to make some really good, uh, have a really good pace. So we were doing like four miles an hour. Um, so we ended up doing 21 to 23 miles or something like that. Um, and we landed here at Iron Bridge, which makes it um, pretty good for us because we're kind of running low on water because um, our freaking water bag broke. Um, so hopefully we'll be either in Bemidji tomorrow or the next day so we'll be we'll be all set on water um, and now we got an awesome campsite here we got some sun drying all our stuff and things are looking good Alrighty, morning of day number four. Um, James is starting a little fire, get us warmed up before we hit the road. We still got the moon in the sky. Uh, game plan today is 11 miles to Silver Maple Campground. We got a friend picking us up just off the highway there. We're gonna slide into Bemidji to resupply. We're there for about five hours, and the same friend's gonna drive us back out to the to the highway. We're just in a short canoe away from Silver Maple. And then the following day tomorrow, we're gonna try and do a big day across Bemidji Lake. And then we're gonna hit the northernmost point of the river. Exciting stuff.
have to go like close to it, okay? All right. I'm just gonna let you do this one alone. <laughs> yeah, we have the limo. I can't get out of that, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> I can't sneak out of that, dude. There's like four inches. <laughs> Are you crazy? Also, you're doing this one solo. I'm filming. Good luck to you. That's it working out back there. <laughs> This was mentioned on the map, and it is also here in reality, too. <laughs> we got the limo into this one. It was actually 2011 limbo champion in my high school. Okay, this is pretty tight. <laughs> Also, uh, oh, kind clear of clear pay way right there. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Also, there's no way out on this side either, dude. <laughs> you know we can't get through there. Ah, uh, like. Oh, what we're gonna do though, right Pep? Huh? Right there. We're gonna climb over it. Boat goes under. We go over. Okay. It's a classic over/under situation. You get me close and I'm gonna hop out. Oh, like this. Hold on, you stay right there. There's numerous logs. <laughs> What's almost, on that side? I almost wiped it. Can we go, we have to go straight on, do we? Uh, it's actually the nose is stuck now. Yeah, you kind of have to go left there, yeah. This has got to be the worst filming ever. I'm sure you can't tell at all what's going on here, but there's a giant tree, the length or the width of the river. And the plan is to sneak the canoe under and then to climb up on this tree. But it's not working out at all. Damn it. We're gonna tune in the back end later. I gotta help. All right, where we were. I'm gonna. What we went under. And then my ride taken off on me. <laughs> See you, man. On the next episode, snow in October? What the heck, Minnesota? <laughs>